Uh, I did kind of spoil it at the start. Havoc had one knockouts title reign in TNA and it was really nothing to run home about. When Havoc came into TNA, it was actually really exciting. She came in, attacked people in her first pay-per-view match. She won a number one contenders battle royal, then went on to win the knockouts title. But then she lost it after about three weeks to Taryn Terrell. And you can't even count it as three weeks because Impact was taped at the time. She technically lost the title after only three days. And this was her only knockouts title reign. I think Havoc deserved a lot better. Uh, as a fan of her, I would have wanted to put her bottom of the list, but you kind of just have to. Number 23, Winter. We all know how weird the run of Winter was in TNA. Not only was she a Knockouts Tag Champion with Angina Love, but she would actually have two reigns with the TNA Knockouts title, both of which didn't really end so well for her as she lost both those titles on her first defense. First off, she won the title at Hardcore Justice 2011 before losing it 18 days later to Mickey James on Impact Wrestling. But then at the next pay-per-view, No Surrender, she won it back before then losing it at the next pay-per-view to Velvet Sky and then never winning the title again. And those were Winter's two reigns of the Knockouts title. Really quite nothing. Number 22, Maria Kanellis. <laughs> Maria Kanellis won the TNA Knockouts title once and Maria Kanellis was never really known for her in-ring ability. She was mainly known for being a manager, but when she did win the Knockouts title, it was kind of cool because, you know, she's a well-known name. She won the title on the September 1st, 2016 Impact Wrestling episode when she made her partner, Ali, who was the champion, lay down for her. So already the way she's winning it isn't that amazing. And then she would lose it after just one month to Gail Kim. Wow. The only reason it's higher than Winter and Havoc is because, you know, at least it was all part of a storyline with Ali, why she won the title in the first place, whereas with Winter and Havoc, their reigns kind of felt just a bit needless for how they weren't given any opportunity whatsoever to do anything yeah. with the titles, but at least this one was to further a storyline. Yeah. Number 21, Jade. Ooh. Jade, now known as Mia Yim what in NXT, who is very very good at what she does was once upon a time the tna knockouts champion in 2016. now for me 2016 was not really a great time for impact in general uh, there was lots of like short title reigns and i think jade is someone who kind of fell victim to that uh, being a very good wrestler she deserved a lot better than it in my opinion she won it on the april 5th 2016 episode of impact before losing it at slammiversary it was only like a two month long reign i think a lot more could have been done with jade and it's just something that wasn't really too memorable for me like i don't remember much from jade's title reign however i know that she was capable of a lot more if impact had given her the chance i feel like that's the story of a lot of people on this list number 20 velvet sky Ooh. when you look at the main three beautiful people members aka angelina madison and velvet velvet probably ranks the lowest in terms of in-ring ability which is why it was kind of surprising when she was given a reign at the tna knockouts title she had two reigns uh, first off she beat winter to win it at bound for glory but only held it for 28 days losing it at the very next pay-per-view TNA really loves doing that, but she would win it once more in my hometown, well not my hometown, my home country of England on February 21st, 2013, and she would have about a three month long reign before losing the title to Mickey James. It wasn't like a bad reign, it wasn't a good reign either, it was just a title reign. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing There's nothing really memorable in terms of match quality and whatnot, but you know what, good on Velvet, good on her. Number 19, Jordan Grace. Uh, this one hurt to put here because this one wasn't even Jordan Grace's fault. In fact, it wasn't even Impact's fault. It was the pandemic's fault. Jordan Grace won the title on the February 11th, 2020 oh, episode of man. Impact. And we kind of all know what would happen in the next month and a half. We go into lockdown. Luckily, Impact had taped episodes, so she did have a couple of defenses. First of all, she defended against Havoc at Sacrifice, and then she started doing an open challenge for the Knockouts title, which saw her defeat Miranda Elise and Lacey Ryan on two different episodes of Impact. But then from there, the pandemic obviously happened, so they couldn't tape anymore, and Jordan Grace was off TV. And her next title defense wouldn't be until Slammiversary, when she then would lose the title to Diona Porrazzo. So it's a shame she really only had about one or two months with the title yeah. and i feel like she could have done so much more but like i said neither impact or hers fault 
Number 18, Ali. The woman we now know as the Bunny in AEW today had two reigns with the Knockouts title. Her first one, as mentioned before, she won the title and then literally a week later, she was forced to lay down for Maria Kanellis. So she only had a one week reign with the title. But her second reign, she would win it on January 12th, 2018 and hold it all the way until April 24th, 2018 when she would face Sue Young and lose the title there. They were, it was a decent reign, not too much happened. Like I said, it was only like a three month one, but either way, still good stuff from Ali. Uh, and then a year later, she would be killed off. So yeah, that, that happened. Number 17, Brooke Tessmacher. Brooke Ooh. Tessmacher is a three time TNA knockouts champion. Yeah. However, the issue uh -huh. within Brooke Tessmacher's uh -huh. title reigns is that, well, she had three title reigns, but uh -huh. they only totaled to 156 uh -huh. days which is approximately five months you divide that by three reigns you're looking at an average of one and a half months per reign which brooke deserved a lot better then because brooke was very good the issue is at the times when brooke was the champion it was kind of a good era for the tna knockouts there was so many talents around there was tara gail kim odb mickey james the beautiful people and it would be people like madison rain tara and gail kim who she would lose the titles to and it's something that you can't really I don't know it's kind of hard because those people are so good like all of them are so good and it was, I, I get it because it was a really good era for the TNA knockout mm. so it was probably difficult to commit to like a long-term champion with so many great women on the roster yeah. number 16 Sienna oh. Sienna or Alison K as she is commonly known as is absolutely incredible one of my favorite women's wrestlers of all time uh, and I'm really uh, glad that she oh. got to have two reigns in the TNA as the knockouts champion her first one it came when she won the title at Slammiversary before losing the title to Ali in about two months later mm. so it was just a, a fine little reign I'm mm. glad she won it at Slammiversary though the way she won it was very but, good winning it at that, a major pay-per-view but her second reign was a quite an important one as she was in a unification match at the next year's Slammiversary well, because at the time she was the GFW Women's Champion and so, Rosemary was the Impact, Impact so. Knockouts champion. So they had a unification match and Sienna won the title. Now this was pretty big because Sienna has effectively been chosen to be the lead women for this GFW Impact merger. Huh? However, the GFW Impact merger kind of fell to crap. And at first, when she won the title, the title was renamed to knock out the GFW Knockouts Championship. But then it was renamed back to the Impact Knockouts Championship. And I think just for the fact that she had to reign during this awful GFW merger, she can't really rank too high. But her reign was very good. It was about six months long. She held it all the way into Bound for Glory. Good. And I wish I could put it higher, Good. but I think it's mainly just a GFW thing that has to stop me. Yeah, but still a very good so. reign. It just had to unfortunately be really complicated and her reign be made really complicated by the GFW merger. Number 15, Laurel Van Ness. Laurel Van Ness had one title reign and it only lasted 65 days. But the reason I put it, you know, higher on this list because the Laurel Van Ness character was just amazing. Uh, Laurel was doing really great stuff and it was a really compelling title reign to watch. It was simply put short and sweet. There was nothing more to it. It wasn't this long, uh, drawn out title reign. It wasn't this short title reign that only lasted a week. Mm -hmm. It was two months, which mm -hmm. isn't too long in the grand yeah. scheme of things. But Laurel Van Ness was a great character, I can't see. and her walking about belt. with the knockouts title was just really fun. Move Number 14, belt. Sue Young. Ooh. On the topic of really compelling characters, Sue Young. Sue Young has had two reigns with the Impact Knockouts title. The first coming at Impact Under Pressure, airing on May 31st, 2018, where she won a last rights match against Ali. I didn't even know this match happened. That is so damn awesome. And she would lose the title to Tessa Blanchard after having about a 110 day long reign, which is a really solid reign. Her second reign was not really anything to run home about. She won the title from Diona Perrazzo at Bound for Glory in a very questionable decision. Uh, something that I very much was against her winning it. And she only held the title for three weeks, losing it at Toning Point, the very next event. Number 13, Rosemary. 
we're going on a little theme here where we're going for these crazy undead zombie characters right now. Rosemary won the TNA Knockouts title once and she held the title for nearly a year. Over 266 days is how long that she held this title for. But if you minus about 30 days off for the tape delay still over 200 days is a very solid reign as i said she was involved in the unification match with sienna which sienna did go over in but a reign as long as this is not is like this is amazing really good especially during this era where we were seeing champions who lasted a week a month for rosemary to be the champion for over six months is really awesome Number 12, we hit the midway point and it's yeah, Mickey, Mickey James. James. Mickey Boy, James was a three-time knockouts champion and we have quite a mixed bag of title reigns here. First of all, she won it at lockdown 2011 and held it for over 112 days, Damn. which is decent, about a four-month long reign. However, her second reign would last um, 10 days, so there's that. But then her third reign would last 112 days Still once good. again. Still I didn't good. even realize Still it lasted the Still exact good. same Still amount of Still time. Good. So yeah, she overall had two solid reigns and one reign that wasn't anything to rave over at all. But no fault of her own, really. TNA loved their short title reigns. Number 11, Taryn Terrell. Taryn Terrell, who you might remember as Tiffany in WWE, she really went nowhere in WWE. She was kind of a job of women. Yeah, uh, was But when, yeah, when she went to she TNA, she was long. incredible. Like, we had never seen this before in WWE, and many of us were shocked by how good she was. She only had one TNA Knockouts title reign, and it lasted 279 days. And it was a very good reign because it came she during an era so. where she, she first of all beat Havoc, who at the time, you know, she came in very dominant. She beat the dominant she Havoc. Knows. And then she, she was against knows. the likes of Gail she Kim, knows. Brooke, Awesome Kong was around during this era, and she mm -hmm. beat Awesome Kong. Mm -hmm. So she had a really good reign mm -hmm. and beat a lot mm -hmm. of great people. Mm -hmm. okay. And at one point, her reign Can't was the longest reign in TNA Knockouts championship history mm -hmm. number 10 tara tara oh, was a five time, yeah. five time five time five time five time five time tna knockouts champion oh, yeah. go, 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 which go. is the third tied most reigns for the title however we see the problem with her title reign as five reigns but only totaling to 222 days and you bring that down you're approximately looking at 40 days her title reign what? which is really not great Whoa, her first reign lasted days. 24 days her second reign lasted WWE. 15 days her she third reign good. lasted 78 days and this reign was actually decent because she defended against odb daphne in some good matches however then she lost it in the awful lockbox challenge her fourth reign lasted one day as she lost it the very next impact Whoa, as Madison Reign made her lay down. But then her fifth reign was a good one, 104 days, and it was really fun as she got to feud with ODB and Eric Young alongside Jesse Godders. And it was just a really fun reign. And I think that reign puts it up to the 10th spot on this list. If that reign wasn't there, she would probably be a lot lower. However, Tara, for that reign, was a very good knockouts champion. And she was a great knockout in general. She deserved a lot better. Number nine, Madison Rain. Madison yeah, Rain was a five time, I'm not doing it again, TNA Knockouts champion with a combined days of 404, making her the second longest in terms of combined days behind the number one on this list. You can probably guess already. But Madison Rain's title reign, Gold or her reigns Rain. even, it was just that Get Madison Rain in general was never known for her incredible ring work. Whoa. I think she's a pioneer of the knockouts division, but I can't Get remember seen. too many of the matches she actually had while she was the champion. But the fact is, she led the women's division. She was a pioneer for the knockouts division, and I have to give her credit for that. So big ups to Madison Rain. Number eight, Diona Perrazzo, the virtuosa yeah. and current and two-time Impact Knockout Champion, has had a very good reign given all the circumstances in the world today. First of all, she won it against Jordan Grace at Slammiversary in a match of the year contender. Such an awesome match. And then went on to defend it against Jordan Grace in the first ever Impact Iron Woman match. Such an awesome match. The two did great. She would lose it to Sue Young, but then she would win it back at Turning Point in a hardcore no disqualification match. Again, an awesome match. And since then, she's gone on to defend it against the likes of Rosemary, Taya Valkyrie in Taya Valkyrie's final Impact match. 
ODB and Jazz. So she's got a whole mixed bag of opponents. She's got top women like Taya and Rosemary and legends like ODB and Jazz who she has defeated. And she has done absolutely fantastic. And I think hey, if Diona Prazo holds the title for any longer, she's only got room to go higher on this list if I was to ever make an updated version in like five years time. Number seven, ODB. ODB Whoa. is a four-time knockouts champion and just a legend of TNA and the knockouts division. One of the pioneers of the knockouts division, no doubt. And she had some really fun reigns with her feuds with the likes of Tara and Awesome Kong and Gail Kim. Awesome Kong. And she was yo, around yo, in 2008 when the knockouts division first kind of started and was really hitting a stride when it was her, Awesome Kong, Gail Kim and Taylor Wilde just killing it week in and week out. ODB, no doubt one of the greatest TNA knockouts of all time and a pretty damn good champion too. Number six, Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard had Ooh. one reign with the Impact Knockouts title lasting 147 days. And when Tessa was the champion, the fact is that she was one of the top women in the world in wrestling. In fact, pretty much the only reason she really lost the title is because she was going to exit the women's division and wrestle with the men's division, where she would obviously go on to become the world champion, which was insane. Obviously unrelated to her women's title reign, but her knockouts title reign was still amazing. It's the it's when I actually became a fan of her, just seeing how good her matches were. And yeah, Tessa comes at number six on this list. Top five time. Coming in at number five is Taylor Wilde. Ooh. Taylor Wilde was a one-time no knockout no, champion. No, no, and she was the no. third I, I, I ever like knockout champion. And it was during a time in the knockouts division in 2008 where it was just in such a great place. You had her, Kong, Angelina Love, ODB, and just a really great time for the knockouts division. And she was notably the one who defeated Awesome Kong and she was, became known as the underdog of the knockouts division. So immediately the way she's won the title was absolutely incredible and she had a really fun reign and she would ultimately lose it back to Kong but she had a 121 day long reign and yeah really good stuff from Taylor Wilde and I can't wait for her to return soon. Number four, Angelina Love. Angelina Love in my opinion was the best member of the Beautiful People and based on this list the best champion of the Beautiful People. She was a six time knockout champion totaling to 226 days. She was the fourth ever TNA Knockouts Champion, and in general, she had some great feuds with likes of Tara, Awesome Kong, Gail Kim, Taylor Wilde. What really separates Angelina is that she faced everyone. She was there while Gail Kim was there, while Awesome Kong was there, while Tara was there, while ODB was there. She faced everyone for the title and feuded with everyone for the title. Number three, Tyre Valkyrie. Tyre Valkyrie oh had gosh, one in the last title reign, but the one that she did Jones have well. lasted 377 days and is the longest TNA Knockouts title reign of all time. And it was a really great reign as well. In fact, she beat pretty much everyone. I mean, there were times where I was really like, okay, she'll lose to this person. Okay, she'll lose to this person. I pretty much betted against her almost every single time, but she always came out on top. She beat pretty much everyone on the roster to keep that title until Jordan Grace eventually did it in 2020. Number two, Awesome Kong. I've already talked about her a lot on this list, but Awesome yeah! Kong truly was not just a pioneer of TNA women's wrestling, but women's wrestling as a whole. There was no one doing it like Awesome Kong when she was around. A two-time knockout champion, totaling to 347 one. days okay. as the champion. Can't say enough good things about that initial first feud with Gail Kim. They were getting the highest rated segments on Impact, having killer match after killer match. Just what an amazing era that was when those two were going at it. I literally, it was such a good time. Then the matches with Taylor Wilde and and then there's also the matches with Taylor Wilde, ODB. What a match she had with ODB in 2008. The Beautiful People, she faced the very best of the Knockouts division and she bested the very best of the Knockouts division to stay champion and what a champion she was. But number one on this list is undoubtedly 
Gail King. King. End of the day, the top two was always going to be Kong or Kim. They are the two greatest TNA knockouts of all time. I just talked about how good their feud was. But Gail Kim in particular, seven title reigns. The most title reigns of any knockout. 711 combined days. The most combined days. And she literally faced everyone. She was around in 2008 during the era of Kong, Taylor Wilde, The Beautiful People, ODB. And then when she came back, in 2011 she was around the likes of Tara and Brooke and Madison Rain and Mickey James and she would stay all the way until 2016 where she had her final seventh reign where she was with the likes of Sienna and Taryn Terrell and Havoc and Maria Kanellis and Ali she quite literally faced everyone she was there during the entire like every era of TNA women's wrestling she was there for and no doubt she's the greatest TNA Knockouts Champion of all time. So that's been it for this video. Probably my longest video in a very, very long time. I can't remember the last time I went above like 12 minutes in the video. But here we are. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you agree with and disagree with in a respectful manner in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, my podcast, my second channel. All links down below. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye and keep on rolling. Like, dude, like, I just to say a big shout out to Top 10 Wrestling, dude, like, like, these, like, like, I've been saying who this entire time, just, wow, just big, that was just big, that was just big, so, goodbye, guys.